Hello, my name is Bill Huang. I'm the founder and CEO of Cloud Minds, a startup focusing on cloud robotics. Before this, I was the GM of China Mobile Research Institute, which is the R&D division for China Mobile, which is the largest mobile operator of the world with more than 850 million users. This is the Android smartphone. Back in 2007, my team at China Mobile developed the first Android smartphone of China, and it's the world's second. Google did the first. Now, its number exceeded more than a billion in China alone. Smartphones start a whole new era of internet. It is called the mobile internet. With its ability to stay online all the time, to tell locations all the time, and to transmit multimedia data, and to be able to download all kinds of applications from the App Store. We can use the mobile phone for payment, social networking, to play games, and for entertainment. And we can even use the mobile phone to do video casting like what we're doing now. We can live without cash, without cars, or even without home, but not without smartphone. Ha <laughs> ha. Today, almost 100% of Chinese homes have telephones. Almost every Chinese has a mobile phone, and mostly a smartphone. But 20 some years ago, when I first returned to China to work, from the US, only 1% of the family has a phone. Almost no one has a mobile phone. That was exaggerated by then. Thanks to the great reform and opening of China, thanks to the hard work of the telecommunications industry of China, the equipment makers, operators, and ecosystem, and government. Today, China is the world's number one in telecommunications, both in terms of technology and in terms of the market size. And it all happened in just 20 years. Many of the recent mobile internet successes must be credit to the development of China's 4G network that was developed and deployed by China Mobile since 2008. And this is the story of innovation which I love to tell. About 10 years ago, the China government decided to issue 3G licenses to operators. There were three technologies available. The European standard, which is the most popular and the best. The US standard, which is not as popular, but quite good. And finally, TDSDMA, created by China, but has never been used by anybody, only some trials and testing. The government decided to give one technology to one operator. China Mobile, the largest and strongest operator, eventually got the less developed and less mature TDSDMA. The government hoped that a China Mobile will make it to work. The international service providers have already used the other technology, and China Mobile cannot convince them to change. And our competition have so much head start, and there is no way for us to catch up with a fresh and unproven technology. What do we do? This was the big challenge for us. And I was the one who faces it directly. We must come up with the unconventional strategy in order to succeed. Finally, I proposed that we build today 
and the tomorrow together. We set out to build a new mobile network that is future-proof by combining 3G and 4G technology development together. And we have convinced our partners, base station makers, chip makers, handset makers, to work together to support a dual standard network for China Mobile. And we worked relentlessly to make it happen. We created a new China 4G standard called TDLTE. And we promoted to have the international 4G standard to be combined with it to form a unified global standard. After several years of hard work, we convinced Europe, Japan, the US, and the rest of the world to combine the two 4G standard into a single international standard. China Mobile is no longer left out in the international community. And China is no longer left out. We helped to make all future smartphones to roam effortlessly throughout the world. And it is a dream come true for the mobile industry. One standard, one world. In 2014, five years after 3G, the China government issued 4G license, TDLTE, to China Mobile. In just one year, China Mobile turned on 1 million base stations and signed on more than 100 million users. And effectively, we made the largest 4G mobile network in the world in just one year. With more than 1 billion 4G users already in China, China is now unquestionably the world leader in mobile internet and mobile communication. With more than 80% of the base station and more than 90% of the handsets of the world made in China today, we're also unquestionably the world leader in technology. Today and also tomorrow, the 5G technology. So people ask, why 5G? Well, 4G is providing mobile internet to businesses and consumers today. With the increasing need of connecting everything to the internet, including automobiles and home appliances, 4G technology will one day no longer be able to keep up. Last year, in 2016, the international community has officially kicked off the 5G technology development. Interestingly, China's TDLTE has the greatest potential to contribute to the 5G technology. Again, we position ourselves for the future. Now, people often ask me, why do you leave China Mobile to start cloud mines? My answer to that is that I want to develop the killer app for 5G, the cloud robot. So what is cloud robot? We humans have emerged from billions of years of evolution. We have become intelligent and sentient. The secret is our brain. It is the most complex computing system in the world with the lowest weight and power. Comparatively, a computing system, a computer, would require one million times more weight and power to be equally powerful. With this limitation, how do we build a robot that is smart? Well, the secret lies in the nerve network. The human body is a machine that has its brain connecting to all the organs of our body 
over a nerve network. But the nerve network is one million times slower than the mobile network. So just like the Wright brothers, who did not exactly copy birds when they invented the airplane, we don't need to copy the human body when we design the smart robot. So in 2012, I came up with a great idea. We can place the electronic brain of the robot in the cloud and connect it to the robot body over a vast mobile network. With the fast transmission, the smart robot can act almost like a human, even though its brain is thousands of kilometers away. This type of robot is called a cloud robot. Interestingly, I discovered the cloud robot would require a hundred times more bandwidth than a normal human user. So we would need the 5G network if every home is to have a smart robot. So I decided to build the cloud robot so that we'll have a killer app for the 5G. And doing that would be my future. As you know, the computer has been human in the ancient game of Go. It was accomplished by a system called AlphaGo, which was developed by Google DeepMind. This event marks the beginning of a new era in human history. We often refer to this as the fourth industrial revolution. And this is the point when we have the rise of intelligent robots. And these robots will be able to do everything that human do not want to do or too dangerous for human to do. Robots will be everywhere, and robots will serve people's needs. My dream is to build the perfect family nanny robot of the future, using the technology that I'm developing. In the AI community, we call the time when the AI system's intelligence is equal or better than a human brain the AI singularity point. With that in mind, the last industrial revolution started in 1950. So the AI singularity point is most likely to be the year 2050, exactly 100 years later. It is my dream for China to lead these advances into the future. And my firm belief that we are able to do so. We have already taken a lead in telecommunication, and we can use that advantage to go further. I call upon all of you to join me and the rest of the world, because this cannot be a personal achievement. This will be the achievement of humanity. Thank you, and that is my story of innovation.